Thanks for coming. My name is Lee Chantel. And um, how many people here have travelled somewhere different than where they were born or grew up? Awesome. Travel's one of my favourite things, so I'm excited about talking about this today with you. Um, there's so many countries to explore, there's so many people to meet, there's so much potential to influence people and to learn from other people in this world. And um, I'm really fortunate I'm able to travel and I hope that if you get the chance to travel that you're able to do that as well. And I think it's one of the most amazing learning experiences that you can have as a person. Um, I travel a lot in America, travel a lot in Southeast Asia, I'm from Australia and I've travelled a lot throughout Australia and I've just about finished my three month European tour over here at the moment so I'm going to talk about a bit from all of that today. And um, all my trips, whether I've planned it or not, have been um, to do with promoting veganism or vegan outreach. And um, sometimes I want to move away from that, but it keeps bringing me back. <laughs> and um, I've been vegan for 20 years. I've run a website called vivalavegan.net for about 12 years now. And I've been involved in a lot of um, vegan outreach and promotion. And um, my website um, for quite a while had daily content. So there was a lot of information to promote vegan lifestyle. Um, I also um, have been involved in some not-for-profits. I run a not-for-profit environmental awareness group for a few years in Brisbane, Australia. We put on the first um, vegan festivals in Brisbane. And um, I also am now the president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society in Queensland, which is my home state. Sunshine state, actually. Better than your weather over here. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I've, got, I've done quite a few different things. And um, I'm able to travel because I have my own business. So I speak about social media. I do marketing, um, online etiquette, online security, lots of different things. So I speak to schools, I speak to businesses, go to um, um, different people one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm able to uh, work when I travel. That's why I can be over here for three months and I'm going to go to Bali for a month on my way home as well. So um, just have a think about some of those things and keep in mind that that's why I'm able to travel a lot because I'm working at the same time. And um, I know a lot of different people, a lot of my friends are travellers and um, try to balance the life and the work as well. So some people work for three months, travel for three months, some people work for a year, travel for a couple of years and it's just working out what works best for you. Um, so. I've um, been speaking a lot for the past over a decade in Australia and I've also done that throughout the world. So um, I first started, uh, someone would have just asked me to give a talk in Australia at one stage and I would have said yes. So that's pretty much how I started speaking and promoting the vegan lifestyle. And 20 years ago there weren't many of us around so I was one of the people that um, helped with um, promote the movement and there's a lot more people now so it's awesome to see. Um, and I was asked to speak at the Animal Rights Conference in Washington DC in 2010. Has anyone heard of that conference before? It's just actually been on, yeah, has anyone been? Okay, so it's pretty, it's pretty good if you're, if you're more focused on the animal rights aspects rather than just veganism or the vegan lifestyle. And um, America was honestly never on the top of my list of places to go. Um, sounded a bit crazy, you know, and well, still does. And um, so I was speaking to a friend and I said, oh, you know, I really want to go to Asia or I really want to do a bit of a road trip around Australia. They were my preferences at that time. And he said to me, you know, if you don't go now, you might not be asked again to, to speak there. So that's why I went. And um, it was really awesome. I made some really great friends. And one of the things that I did that I would suggest that you guys do if you're going to somewhere, another country or something different, is reach out to people who are doing the same thing as you. So um, at, for the Animal Rights Conference, there was a list of all the other speakers that were taking part of the event along with me. So I reached out to them all on Facebook. I'm no longer on Facebook personally, but I was at that stage. 
And I messaged them and I said, hey, I'll be at this event, love to catch up with you. And I also do a lot of interviews with inspiring vegans. So I said, I'd love to interview you, you as well. And because of that, some of those people are like my closest friends nowadays. And I'm really good at socialising, I love networking, I love meeting new people. So that's a, that's a skill that you can learn as well if you're not really that good at it. And it would be really good um, to focus on those sort of things and just meeting people. Like it doesn't matter like um, whether or not they can give you anything. It's just creating the connections. That's, that looks good. What flavours did you get? Uh, that's a veggie serving, aren't they? Oh, <laughs> lovely. I think you should have bought us all a pizza, though, if we were going to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, good spot. <laughs> You'll have to share it with him, at least. <laughs> um, so I would suggest that people just, um, you know, go outside the square a bit or even outside of your comfort zone a bit as well if you're going somewhere new. Reach out to people. And um, just start the just start the conversation and just start to get to know people. And um, the things that you think about a particular country or a particular people, um, they can they can be changed if you open your mind, you know. Um, so that's that was good for me to me to learn when I went to the states. I've done a lot of road trips across um, the Midwest in particular. I think I've been to about 30 states out of the 52, 50, 32 out of 50. And um, I really, it was, it was great to see. I love travel because you can see through other people's eyes or um, a different way of living and maybe see what um, challenges that they have in their lives or with activism or veganism. So I was there around just after the global financial crisis, which I believe was 2008. So I was, I was there in 2010. Now, a lot of my friends either couldn't get jobs or had really shitty jobs for um, the qualifications that they had. Now, um, have a think about how those sort of things would affect your activism or how much money you can support um, a local sanctuary or a rescue place or even be able to afford to go to an event. So all of us here were able, you know, were able to come to an event, were able to get on public transport or walk, afford to pay for the money to get in the door. And we're able to, you know, when we're here, buy some food, buy something to drink, buy, buy some products. Some people can't do that. So I just really want you to be mindful of, of other people as well. And um, think about how, and I'm sure there might be some of you that are in this, this sort of um, um, area as well. You might have these, your own challenges like this. Did you want to come down here, ladies? If that's a very good spot, but a chair might be better. <laughs> and, hey guys. And um, so yeah, just have a think about how all these things affect people. And um, we really want to make sure that we can be the most effective that we are and in activism and in communicating with people because that's what it comes down to. That's what I believe everything's about in life, it's communicating properly to people in an authentic, non-judgmental way. And so, um, I am, um, in America in particular, a lot of people don't like or have never left their own state, let alone their own country. And that's a bit weird for, for me because I, I grew up on a tropical island. I grew up on Bougainville Islands, which is part of the Solomon Islands in Papua New Guinea. And I spent the first, first 10 years of my life there and I've been in Australia since. So I always travelled when, when we were younger, we travelled every year somewhere different. And um, so I was just like, what do you mean you don't know any, anything outside of your state? And, um, but yeah, some people aren't able to afford that. Some people are quite comfortable just to do what they do at the same time every year in, this, in the same way. <coughs> and I realise how fortunate I am to be able to do that too. Um, and there's so many ways that we can connect with people and start conversations. Like years ago, it was MySpace. Loved MySpace. Um, and there's also Twitter. I'm, I really like Google Plus. So I've got a lot of um, vegan people on um, Google Plus, Facebook, and now Instagram. And you know, we can connect with so many people in different ways through these through these um, sources. And um, 
it's really it's really great to find people like you know just on Instagram last year when I was in Bali you know hashtag um, Bali vegans or Ubud vegans and you can meet all these other people that are traveling there at the same time as you are and I made some great friends because of that and um, to sometimes understand how people live or certain situations or why countries or why particular people act or do the things that they do, sometimes you have to actually experience that and be within that to, to absorb that and to understand. And a really good example I want to talk about is a place called Troy, New York. Has anyone heard of that? It's upstate New York. So um, I was having a, a bit of a conversation slash heated debate with one of my drunk vegan friends one night. And um, she said, everyone should be able to go vegan. Everyone should go vegan. Who agrees with that statement? Okay, so I said, well, is it easy for everyone to go vegan? Like, what about if you live somewhere where you don't have access to fruit and vegetables, for example? She's like, everyone should be able to have that. You know, in Queensland, where we live, we have an abundance of fresh fruit and vegetables. Very lucky. And we've got the climate to grow these things too. Now, one of my friends, um, Sheila, she used to live in Troy, New York. And it was a low socioeconomic area that you could buy houses that were shut down and boarded up for about $1,000. People were going around stealing all the copper pipes and everything just to make some money. There was no fruit and vegetable stores. They just started a local community garden that was getting a bit of traction, but it couldn't really feed a lot of people. Um, of course, they had Hungry Jacks, Burger King, whatever they're called, KFC, McDonald's. They had all of those sort of fast food chains that are very essential for everyone nowadays. And they had um, liquor stores, so places you could buy alcohol. And it was very, very hard if you didn't have your own transportation to get outside of that area. So for people who didn't have any money, didn't have their own transportation, it's very hard for those people to be able to buy fruit and vegetables or to go out and to even try to be better than, they, than, the, the, than what they're around at the moment. So does everyone understand that? Does there, can everyone sort of maybe empathize a bit with that? Cool. So, and you know, to be in that situation and see it, sometimes that's the only way you're going to understand that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I just want everyone to try and just think a bit outside and try and just be a bit more empathetic, even though you're not in that same exact situation. And um, something that, one of my quotes that I say a lot is, everyone has a choice, but some people have better choices than others, okay? And um, we just really need to be compassionate and mindful with people. That, that's the trick. We don't want to be putting people off all the time. You should be vegan, why aren't you vegan? Okay, well maybe here's what you can do for the time being, or here's some ways I can help you. Or what would you like to talk about? Or how, you know, do you have any questions? So just try to understand that, you know, not everyone's on the same page as us, and some people are never going to be. And that's okay. You know, that's the world we live in. And, you know, this has taken me quite a while to, you know, accept these things, you know. I'm all about the non-judgment and non-attachment nowadays, but that took me a while to, to do that. And, you know, 20 years of vegan, you know, you hopefully I've learned a few things in 20 years. <laughs> okay, and um, I might talk about Southeast Asia now. So who's been to Asia? Who's done any travels in Asia? Cool. Where have you been? Thailand? Um, where? Sorry, yeah, we used to live there. Oh, you used to live there? Cool. Yeah. Where did you live? Uh, Koh Samui. Oh, Koh Samui, cool. For two years, yeah. I did a diving course in Koh Tao, beautiful area, that, that space. Um, and um, what about, so where have we got Bali? Has anyone been to Bali? Cool. Um, where else have we got? Cambodia? Love Cambodia. Vietnam? Yeah. <laughs> You've been everywhere, have you? <laughs> Not within Southeast Asia. Burma? Thailand, Laos, Vietnam. Oh, yeah, Laos. Cambodia, Malaysia, Philippines. Cool. Recently, one of those like three years ago. Okay, cool. I haven't been to the Philippines yet. Mm. But it's, South America. 
It's beautiful. Oh, you have? Yeah. I haven't done South America yet, so top of the list, yeah. So, um, Southeast Asia is amazing. It's very close to us in Australia too. So I think it's six hours from um, Brisbane where I am to Denver, so which is the airport in Bali, in Indonesia. And um, it's very cheap to live. So I like travelling on a bit of a budget. I like being frugal and stuff like that. Not too much. I'm more of a flash packer than a, bash, um, than a backpacker, let's be honest. But um, I really like to make my money last and to travel for as long as I can. So when I first went to Southeast Asia, I'd run this, I'd run this not-for-profit for five years, took over my life, had a, had a few festivals, needed a bit of a break. So I went on a six month tour to Southeast Asia. The plan was about a country a month. That was the sort of plan. Um, when I first got to um, Java in um, Indonesia, one of the islands, I met up with one of my Facebook friends, Chahaya. And he introduced me to the um, manager of the Indonesian Vegetarian Society. And this is the first week on the way. And um, they said to me, would you like to come and speak at all these vegan events that we're going to do? And I'm like, okay, um, if you pay for me, if you've got somewhere to stay, easy, I'll do it. So three months out of my six month trip was speaking in Indonesia. And I love Indonesia. I adore the place, I adore the people. And um, so my plan of going to Southeast Asia to chill out for six months didn't really work out. But I had an awesome time, made some you know, friends for life and had a great time. I did a lot of food demos and I spoke to mostly Buddhist people because the people over in Indonesia in particular are mostly Buddhist and mostly Chinese people and Chinese Indonesian. And um, one of the biggest things was, <coughs> what's wrong with dairy? What's wrong with eggs? Because they're told from their religion that you know, you're not meant to eat animals. So that's fine, everyone follows that. But what about the other stuff? So that was one of the things that I talked about a lot there. And um, I gave, one of the things that people always wanted me to make was my um, che vegan cheese sauce. So um, if you have a look at my vivalavegan.net YouTube channel, I've got a lot of food demos on there as well, some in Indonesian, in Bahasa. And um, one, so there's four ingredients, pretty easy to make. Um, some sort of uh, cruelty-free milk, some sort of oil, some sort of flour, and the, the um, main ingredient, does anyone know? Cashew nuts. Cashew nuts, good, good um, guess, not quite. What would make it cheesy? What would make a cheese sauce cheesy? Carrot? No, not quite. Nutritional. Nutritional yeast, exactly. And so I was going and showing people how to make this cheese sauce with nutritional yeast. This is the key ingredient to my cheese sauce being cheesy, okay? Keep in mind. Now, how, how easy do you think it might be to find nutritional yeast in Indonesia? Not very. And if you could find it, it was very expensive, okay? And some people are not making much. You know, the, you know, the people, the general people, $2 a day, $200 a month, something, something like that. So for me to make something to promote veganism and show people it's easy to do and you can have cheesy stuff too, um, that was sort of um, stopped a bit by whether it was affordable or not. And I've been um, speaking a lot in the States as well, and in, in, in particular places like Portland, Oregon, and um, New York, and LA, where everyone has everything. There's just so much of that stuff. In Indonesia, people didn't even know what it was, let alone be able to afford it. So this was, a, this was quite a learning experience for me. So how can I make something like this if the majority of people that I'm trying to talk to about it can't afford to actually buy this product? So we did make it a lot of the times just to show people, but most people are probably never going to be able to make it. And, um, you know, in Indonesia as well, it's a Muslim country. So a lot of people are really scared of particular animals, in particular dogs, and um, how, do, how do you work with people who are scared of animals that you're trying to protect? 
And a lot of people really don't have much respect for humans, let alone animals. So it's really hard to even start the conversation with people about animals and trying to respect animals. And this is about, I think, learning a bit about the culture and the customs and the people, especially before you go. And I think doing your research is really important beforehand as well. And um, it can, it's, especially in Asia, there's a lot of things that um, are billed as um, sanctuaries or um, nature parks that when you go there, are really not and they're quite horrific so I might just tell you a bit of a story about that and you like I did a lot of research for a lot of the places I went to and sometimes you really don't know until you're there in the spot and I went to this place um, Banda Lampung in Sumatra which is an island of Indonesia as well and I wanted to go they had wild Sumatran tigers white rhinoceroses and elephants so pretty exciting I'm like go see all these animals it's gonna be great when I get there, it's throughout the day. The um, Sumatran tigers, you can only see at night when you went on a bit of a safari, okay? That's fine, two out of, oh, still at two out of three. Um, white rhinoceroses just had some babies. So they were in a little enclosure and you couldn't, couldn't see the white rhinoceros. Okay, what about the elephants? Go to see the elephants, they're all tied up. Their legs all tied up, can't really walk very far. And I actually was with some vegan people who were my tour guides for that day. And they didn't understand why I didn't want to ride on the elephants. They could not understand. And they didn't understand why I was so upset about seeing these animals chained up. And it was a really, really hard day. And then they said to me at the end of the day, I know what will cheer you up, we'll go somewhere else. And they took me to like a zoo. And um, it was a like it was at night, maybe six o'clock when the call to prayer sort of noise is on and the animals were pacing and it was horrible. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be here, <laughs> let's go. So it was a really, really bad day that day. The next day, however, I went to this place called Bukit Langwang and I went there specifically to see the semi-wild orangutans. And um, when I got there, I spent, pretty much most of the day traveling there. And when I got there, it was about three or four o'clock, and I said, I'm here to see the orangutans. Can I go on a bit of a trip? And they're like, oh, might be a bit too late. They might not come out. I'm like, that would be right. But I said, okay, that'd be great. Let's give it a go. So I had a bit of a tour guide, and we went up to see the orangutans. And it's an awesome place because um, semi-wild means that um, they've looked after them and they've let them go. And they have areas set up where they feed them twice a day. Whether or not the animals come and eat the bananas is another story. But some of them do every day. Some of them will go away for a couple of years, might come back with their babies or something like that. So it's really good. And there's no interaction. I couldn't touch the orangutans or anything like that. So we're there for a while. And then all of a sudden, just at the canopies of us, there's these, there's these mummies and these babies. And there's four of each. And it was so gorgeous. They're like this bright orange colour. And they came down, had some food, just, you know, looked at us, you know, and it was just so gorgeous. And then um, on the way back, we got this like tire tube down the river in the middle of the rain. And we just, and I felt like it just washed everything away. Like the, the bad day beforehand, just everything was better, everything was washed away. And it was awesome. I really loved that. And um, I just think, you know, every country has their own unique issues with the way we use and abuse animals. Every country does. You know, there's um, things like urbanisation destroying habitats, like our koalas back home. A lot of them, we don't have as many koalas anymore because we've got heaps of um, units. Everyone needs units. And there's lots of shooting of animals that people deem pests. So whether it's brumbies, whether it's kangaroos, there's lots of racing and there's fighting of animals for money, for gambling. And greyhounds, like that's a big thing over in Australia at the moment, greyhound racing. And I think it's, this all comes down to how we use and abuse animals. And I also think that we're not connected with the universe, with each other and animals as much as we used to be centuries ago. 
we're just here, we just seem to be like, okay, what can you give me? What can I take from you? What money can I make from you? What can I do? That's, that seems to be what everyone's focusing on at the moment. And I just think, you know, that, and even in regards to music or art or people, there's so many awesome people out there, there really is. I know a lot of them. And, um, but we really have to search for it. You really have to search for those people and for the good music and the good art nowadays, you know. And um, I think there's so many people all the time that are trying to make the world a better place for animals and they're trying to educate people and they're trying to lead by example. And um, not everyone has to post about this online. I know that might be hard for people to understand, but not everything you do has to go online. And um, there's just so many people behind the scenes. There's so many people that do stuff and they don't talk about it and don't want any, um, any thanks or anything from it. And I think we all can do our best in the best way that we know how. And that's what I, I like to believe that in people. I know there's a lot of people fighting online and carrying on about stuff online, but I really like to think that every single person is doing the best they can in the best way they know how. And I really hope that we can all just learn to be a bit more open and to learn from others. Because you can always learn something from someone if you're open to learning, okay? And um, another thing if you're going to go overseas, go do a bit of travelling, don't expect that you can save people from themselves. Especially the white people going into some other country and we're like, yep, we'll save you. It'll be great. We're here now. Because that, you know, obviously hasn't worked before. And, um, yeah, there's people that you can get involved with that are already doing things in whatever area you're in. And if you haven't found them, you really need to look a bit harder. Um, has anyone heard of Work Away? You know, that. Okay, so I did that. So my plan when I came over here, I had about a, a, in Europe for three months and ten days. And I've got a lot of friends over here, and I wanted to see them. And I've got a new book um, called the, um, Expert Tips with Vegan Athletes, Fitness Fanatics and Exercise Enthusiasts is the full title. But I just call it my Vegan Athletes book. And so that book's my fourth print book, and it's selling very well over here. So that was another reason that I decided to come. Now, because I've travelled a lot in Asia, and it's very cheap, just a bit before I left home, I'm like, oh, I'm going to Europe. It might be more expensive over there than it is in Asia to travel. I better rethink a few things. So a few of my friends, they use a website called WorkAway. So it's workaway.info, I believe. And it's this awesome website where you, I call it energy exchange. And I like energy exchange. What skill sets do you have that I, that I need help with? What do I have that I can help you with? And so um, what it is, is so mostly for my social media and my marketing expertise, I go and stay at someone's house and I don't have to pay for accommodation and they cook for me. So I think that's pretty awesome. And so I did that a few times over here, just in between staying with friends. And um, my first one I did was in near Kendall, which is um, near the Lakes District. Has anyone been out that way? Beautiful, loved it. And um, so I was helping there with an artist family. And then I did another one um, at a vegan cafe in Marbella in Spain, called The Pharmacy. And I was there to help with update the menu but it ended up being painting walls and um, updating, updating the menu and doing photo shoots and uh, writing my lettering. I do a lot of lettering. So I did the menus and our new um, smoothies, bowls and juices menu on the wall. And it was really awesome. And, um, and it was really cool. So, so I think I've only paid for accommodation five nights out of three months and 10 days. So I'm quite impressed with myself with that. And um, so just think outside the square a bit. Like, you don't have to go overseas and pay a heap of money to stay somewhere. And uh, I know I've got, like, I've got 20 years worth of contacts, so that helps. But um, you can find people that you can help out with all the time. And in particular, if you want to go somewhere else, like, oh, 
let's go to Mexico, who needs, who needs a hand? And I've only been able to do short workaways, but a lot of people do three months or something like that. So I definitely suggest you do that. And the people that I've been staying with, some of my friends, not necessarily vegan. There's been a few that are vegan, but some are not vegan. And I think it's really awesome to spend time with people and to live the way that they live and to get to know their lifestyle. And um, I love slow travel and I love meeting people in the community. And it's a really good way to see, meet people's friends and their family and learn what they do. And um, I just think, you know, we should all volunteer a bit more. If you don't volunteer already, I really hope that you can do a bit more volunteer work. And this really helps get to know people and um, work out what your skill sets are, work out what you're good with, work out, learn about people as well. And I think it's really important to connect with different types of people because we're not all the same and that would be so boring if we were too, I think. And um, especially people that have different beliefs, have different upbringings and people that have things that we disagree with. We want to be able to have a conversation and say, hey, I don't really agree with that, but let's talk about it in a nice way, non-judgmental way, and have a conversation and learn from each other. And I think um, that there's a whole world outside of the Facebook echo chamber. And um, you know, if you really, if you really put the time and energy into finding it. And the vegan movement at the moment, a lot of people are saying that it's quite successful. You know, it's quite maybe mainstream-ish at the moment. Most people know how to say the word at least nowadays. And um, it's quite popular at the moment. Um, but I always think there's more that we can do to promote the lifestyle. I've noticed over the past 20 years that a lot more people are focusing on dietary aspects, um, fitness and weight loss, things like that, rather than the ethics of the movement. So when you meet a vegan 20 years ago, they would it, people say nowadays I'm vegan for the animals, hashtag vegan for animals. Um, but you know, 20 years ago that was a given. Everyone cared about animals. And now, you know, it can just be because you're going to look hotter in a bikini. And um, that seems to be what people are promoting. And the problem is that um, that's what's getting likes as well. That's what people are interacting with. It's really good photos of a smoothie bowl or um, your food or half-naked selfies. You know, that's what people are interacting with and getting the most likes and interaction from. So. Um, let's balance it out a bit. Let's put some facts or some figures or share something different than food. And, um, you know, it's really hard to sometimes not be judgmental. It's really hard to sometimes not criticise people because we all think we know the best way to do things, don't we? You know, and because we've learned that, we've experienced it, that's why. And everyone has their own truths. Everyone has their own way of getting to where they are at the moment. And that's what I hope that we can all do, is learn from each other. Why did you get here? How, why are you at this point at the moment? Why did you go vegan? Why are you still vegan? That's one of the things we need to focus on. Heaps of vegans, but there's a lot of non-vegans too. And there's a lot of people who used to be vegan that no longer are. How can we make veganism inclusive, more inclusive, so that people, whether or not they're vegan, feel like that they can come into the movement and help us. I think it's really important to think about like allies of the movement. And if you think about, say, the LGBTQI community, it's a really good example of people, and they have so many allies to the movement who support whatever they support, whether or not they're gay or lesbian. So how can we learn from other movements and other social justice movements to promote veganism in the best way. You know, if someone, there's some really great writers online and journalists who speak about veganism a lot who aren't necessarily vegan. Is this a bad thing? You know, they're, they're talking about veganism to a lot of people and there's a lot of people I've seen that are like, well, they're not vegan, doesn't matter, we're not gonna listen to them. It's just starting the conversation and that's really important. And you know, it's not, Veganism shouldn't be just about white, privileged, middle class, um, thin people. So think about outside the square, 
you can learn more from other cultures, you can learn more from other social justice movements and share the stuff that they say. You don't have to say it. There's, people, there's other people saying the good stuff. Just share that sort of information. And I think we can all learn more and I think we can all do better. And I think um, we really need to be mindful of the language that we use online because most people would never say the stuff that they say online one-on-one -on -one to people, well, I hope not. And um, I also want to talk about the way that people um, use racist language online because, say for example, um, Japan and dolphins. There's a lot of people that say, oh, all the Japanese like this, or all this, or all that, and it's not true. So be mindful of what language you're using because we don't have to be putting down another culture or another type of person just to promote veganism, okay? That's a hard one to understand for some people. But veganism, animal rights, we can be nice to other people at the same time as promoting what we're trying to. So think about the words you're using or people that you see online, some of the words that they're using in regards to Japan and dolphins. China and dog meat, Middle East and the live trade, and think about how you can maybe better use your words or educate people in a non-confronting, non-judgmental way, which is important. And I think there's just so many different types of vegans, and I think we can all learn from each other. It's always something to learn. And um, I want us all to keep an open mind and always be willing to learn from each other. And there's so many things that we agree with. There's so many things that connect us. Now, if we focus on those things, instead of all those little things that are really not important in the grand scheme of things, we all need to work better together and you know, try and forget all those little things because that's the only way we're going to move forward. And um, a lot of people ask me my top sort of tip in 20 years being vegan. And it would be just to lead by example and be consistent. Okay? Lead by example, be consistent. And um, just be, be the best vegan you can be in the best way you know how. Try to always learn because you might change that. If you're still open to learning, you can change that into a different way. And um, I hope you've all learned something today. I'm going, I've filmed this video, I'll put it up on my YouTube channel, so if you can, you can watch it later or tell someone else about it. And um, if you have learned something today, I hope you share it with someone else, so that they also might learn something new. And um, you can follow me, vivalavegan.net, and I've also got my leechantel.com website. And I'm on all the social media channels too, so Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, etc. So you'll find me online. And um, we might have a bit of time for questions, but that's it from me today. So I hope you, hope you got something out of it.